Hello there. So, uh, just a quick show and tell. A while ago I recorded these samples, uh, which are... Well, let's start off, actually. Let's start at the beginning. So this here is a basically a recording of my Buzzy B analog oscillator. The decent sampler version. So these are the actual samples that I used. Not sure why one channel is slightly louder than the other, but it is. Anyway, I saved that out and uh, brought it into my Zoom Live Track L8, sort of a, a portable uh, multi track recorder, and then I put it through a quite an interesting signal path. Uh, this was actually before Christian uh, did his posh what is it, CR78, something like that? The drum machine, anyway, uh, which he put through various compressors and saturation uh, and that kind of thing. So this was an idea I had where I basically, I put it through, first of all, a guitar effect pedal that I built, which is a, um, I think it's it's like a, a fuzz face, maybe? I can't quite remember. It's a clone of some classic sort of distortion fuzz pedal. Um, which I incorrectly, sort of air quotes, incorrectly uh, biased intentionally, so as to give it a kind of um, almost like a sort of brass instrument kind of sound. Um, at least that's that was sort of the idea, and and it does that quite well with guitar. But I wondered what it would be like to put the synthesizer through. So this is, uh, I think. It's a long time ago that actually I never got around to doing anything with it. I finally came across it. Um, I think this is the signal from the coming coming out of that of that guitar effect. Okay, so not a huge amount of difference really. It's just kind of uh, some distortion. I guess we're getting maybe a bit more interest. But uh, what I then did was I played it through a small, uh, it's actually a Bluetooth speaker, one of those little sphere, spherical ones. Um, but I, I plugged it in directly into the line in. And I, years ago, I made a sort of leather attachment. <laughs> which sounds a bit odd, uh, but a way of marrying this little spherical speaker to a old brass gramophone bell, the, the trumpet. Uh, and this is what we get. I've, I've actually got, I think, two tracks here picking up um, signal, and I, I can't remember what, what I used. One of them might have been a contact microphone, either that or I'm, or I'm using two different microphones with slightly different placement. I think I do have a photograph somewhere which might, um, or even video. If I can find that I'll uh, maybe splice it into the video. Anyway, so this was the uh, what I got out from some of these. It's obviously um, resonating at either the frequency of, maybe the frequency of the uh, the metal horn, the, the the gramophone horn, and so you get the occasional odd sort of flutter as it's actually resonating. And maybe if one of these is a contact microphone, it might be kind of rattling the the two metal plates together. So that's quite interesting. This is the other source. Um, these low ones are kind of rattly, almost sound like uh, pneumatic drills, but it gets more and more interesting, or m not interesting, more and more usable perhaps. However, uh, I had an idea of um, using convolution reverb to try and impart a bit more of a sort of horn sound, and then kind of got distracted, or or I came across this sound anyway. And this is a reverse hallway impulse response, which was just built into the uh, 
into the effects in here, into the convolution reverb um, in Adobe Audition. Audition. Sorry, I'm, I'm a bit tired uh, as per usual and rambling. But uh, anyway, so this is a reverse. I guess it's it's probably a recording in a hallway that they've then reversed, and you get this interesting, almost bowed effect. Or at those lower notes, it's almost like a like a massive gong being struck. And there it starts to sound to me at least quite um, yeah like something being bowed. sort of strange lo-fi otherworldly cello perhaps I might need to do some EQing because uh, the high frequencies start to get really uh, emphasized I guess when it's uh, stretched down, pitch down a little bit between the notes, it might uh, might be okay. So I'm, I'm going to leave, maybe leave most of those high frequencies and then just have a tone control. Yeah, they do get a bit unpleasant. Uh, here's the other source. interesting this uh, particular note is obviously a lot louder and it's almost like you've got it's kind of over uh, compressed and I think that's because it might be that the uh, impulse response is uh, convolution <laughs> I'm, I'm going in here because I couldn't think of the word convolution convolution reverb um, it might be emphasizing those those frequencies in that those particular frequencies um, possibly I'm not sure. Anyway, for whatever reason, that particular note seems louder and more yeah, emphasized. Anyway, uh, I thought this was kind of interesting and um, it's a technique I wanted to experiment with a bit more. Um, and maybe, like I say, this sounds kind of um, bowed to me, I guess because of the reverse. So like, like that, um, that swell uh, rather than a Hey, the slow attack, I guess. Um, so I might play around with some other uh, impulse responses um, and see if I can get more of a brass sound uh, or I don't know all kinds of different instruments. See what see what I can uh, what I can do. I was in part inspired for this kind of second part of it, the using the impulse responses and the convolution. By there's an excellent video that I think it's Venus Theory. You, on YouTube and and on Piano Book on the forum, he posted a really interesting video on using, um, I guess, the wider uses of convolution processing. And it got me thinking it'd be interesting to try and mimic um, or impart some character of one instrument into another. I was also thinking it would be interesting if you could, if there was some kind of plugin, uh, like a reverb plugin or yeah, some kind of something that that would model um, if if you, if there was some way of not just changing the room size um, of like a a, kind of a virtual hallway, um, but if you could affect the width and height um, and make a kind of a a really long, thin, very small kind of virtual chamber modeled reverb chamber, um, whether you could impart kind of the effect of like a wind instrument by modeling that this sort of like a, a long tube and and put a, a sound into one end and i don't know whether it would i don't know i don't think it would actually work um how i initially imagined it um because the the length of the tube effect you know in, in, a, in a real wind instrument uh is affecting the the pitch uh and the the bore of the tube the 
the di uh, circumference diameter diameter um and there's a lot of complex things going on there which i don't think i don't know i guess playing a sound through it is different from actually producing it maybe i don't know anyway as i say i'm uh, i'm a bit tired um so i am rambling i uh I'm, I'm doing this just to give myself a bit of a break from this world drums project i'm working on um just because that's taking quite a while and i guess just for my my own mental health i'm i'm doing a uh, something a little simpler a little more simple um in between it's apparently it's a mental health awareness month um so i'll just mention that i i struggle with anxiety um fairly <laughs> without wanting to, to be overly dramatic fairly crippling social anxiety um as actually i suppose a lot of creative people probably do but um yeah so i i try to be a little mindful of my where i'm at and um ease back when when things get a little little bit intense uh, and and recently my anxiety has been a little elevated i don't know why but I guess I haven't been physically active enough, or, uh, yeah, I don't know, just, um, I just have to be a bit more careful, so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm editing these, uh, these samples that I, I did ages ago, and I'm going to essentially plonk them into my, <laughs> drop them into my Buzzy Bee oscillator synthesizer thing, the decent sampler instrument that I made ages ago, and, uh, th that was my first decent sampler instrument, uh, so I'm just going to essentially take these these processed samples, maybe a few variations. Um, I haven't quite decided, but uh, I think it's going to be more straightforward than wading through the the world drums, which is, as I say, a little bit um, daunting. Uh, I've got, I've done uh, I've got two djembes. I've processed those. In fact, okay, I'm back. Uh, I've opened up decent sampler with my world drums instrument as it stands so far i haven't got a background in and these uh controls are essentially what i set up for the decent sampler version of christian's drum synth thing that i worked on the posh uh something or other cr78 something like that but yeah this is kind of where it's at at the moment So if we bring up the secondary mic, which for most of the drums was, so, so that the, the main mic was um, like an overhead or like a close mic near the skin, the, the top of the drum. And then the secondary mic for most of them was, uh, in fact, all of them except the Boran and, or Baran, the, like an Irish frame drum anyway. Um, and maybe the tabla, I can't quite remember. That's the sort of pair of Indian drums, the big one and the small one. I think, yeah, for, for the for most of the drums, the rest of the drums, um, I had the secondary mic in the open end, the sort of bell of the, the drums, like the, especially the goblet drums, um, like the tabla and the dabuka. And so that, I think, probably isn't how you would generally mic these kind of drums, but um, I wanted to record everything I could. So... Um, I've done that and I'm glad I did because it seems to add a lot more of a bass. Adds more bass to it. Uh, and then we, of course we've got a room mic. It's just a, a mono mic so there's no stereo imaging. Uh, that's probably what I'll try and... Um, purchase next i've uh, i've been spending a little bit too much recently so uh on on gear so uh it might be a little while while off but yeah i'd like to get a, a pair of um, a match pair of, of mics for doing stereo recording uh, let's add a bit of reverb Uh, so the white keys are open for most of the drums. And then the black keys will be uh, muted. In fact, I'll turn this reverb down so you can hear. 
So this is open, and this is Um, I've got three round robins on for each. Some of them are a little shonky, so I might need to replace them. And then I've got two velocity layers for each note. Uh, this is the second djembe. I'm um, doing some particularly poor finger drumming tonight. Uh, my Dabuka, uh, which is a sort of Middle Eastern, uh, I think, Turkish and, and Egyptian, maybe. I can't quite remember now. Uh, forgive me. I'll, I'm probably completely wrong there. But anyway, there are a couple of different styles. And I think mine is, I think mine's more the Turkish style, which has exposed, um, I don't know, tuning things. Whereas I think the, it's the Egyptian one it has more like a it's got like a, a ring covering. It's, so it's it's got more of a rounded profile. And I wasn't able to tune it as high as I would have liked. Um, so it's probably probably won't sound very good. But uh, and again, I'm not playing it very well. Uh, but I will put in. Um, I'd like to have the option to tune the bass tones separately from the, the high tones. I'd like to be able to do that with tags, but I don't think that's an option at the moment, so I might have to restructure how I've got my groups set up so that I can split things up into bass and uh, high treble tones uh, rather than into, at the moment I've got it, the different mic sources. But now that we can use tags for volume, I maybe don't need to do that. Uh, it just, but it, it is a little bit easier keeping my keeping everything organised that way. But if that's the only way to adjust the pitch of the different tones, then I might do that. Um, just because I think it would be quite good to be able to, if you want the bass to be a little bit of a lower um, note, especially for the um, drums that are in pairs. So the tabla and the bongos. <laughs> it's funny, actually, when I was trying to tune my bongos up, which they're obviously quite cheap ones. Um, I, I have no idea where we got them. Probably like, I don't know, a garage sale or a secondhand shop or something. Um, when I was trying to tune them, one of the like the lug things on the sides uh, just completely snapped off, like the metal bits on the sides so that was a bit unfortunate but I kind of wired put ran a wire underneath and um, kind of held it together while I quickly recorded it so again that won't be quite um, at the pitch I would have liked but uh, I've kind of struggled through it and uh, done my best and um, eventually I'll finish it and yeah hopefully it will uh, be useful to someone anyway uh, Thanks for listening, and uh, I'm sorry for rambling so much. I uh, hope you're all doing well out there. Yeah, it's a funny time we're living in. It's a bit, I think, a bit stressful and tough on all of us. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's good having the community and these, uh, these projects to occupy ourselves. So, yeah, once again, sorry for rambling, and uh, thanks for listening. Thanks. I hope it was interesting, and um, I'll keep you posted. Tut off for now.